Good evening, and welcome to the City Council Candidate Forum for the City of Gresham. This evening, the forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of East Multnomah County, with co-sponsors of Metro East Community Media, Gresham Area Branch of American Association of University Women, and the Coalition of Gresham Neighborhood Associations. I'd like to thank the City of Gresham for the use of the City Council Chambers tonight. I'm Lorraine Griffey, a member of the League of Women Voters of East Multnomah County and will be your moderator for this evening. The forum will be televised by Metro East Community Media and will be replayed. Questions will be prepared by the League of Women Voters. Three questions will be asked of each candidate with 90 seconds to answer each question, followed by questions from the audience. And the audience is invited to submit questions for the candidates on the cards provided. If you need a card, raise your hand and <coughs> one of the league members will get it to you and then be sure and get it back to them. Timekeepers for tonight are Susan Foster and Sharon Rent. At 30 seconds remaining, a green warning sign will be raised. At 15 seconds, remaining a yellow card will be raised and when the red card is raised the candidate will be cut off and I just would like to say before the audience leaves tonight be sure and stop by the League of Women Voters table and pick up a voters guide along with a card for the vote411.org this is information that you can put in online and get inf information on your own uh, ballots. And with that, we'll move on to the City of Gresham Councilors, and I'd like to introduce Jerry Hinton, position one, Carolyn Eccles, position three, Richard Strathern, position three, and Paul War King, position five. You'll have two minutes for an opening, 90 seconds to answer questions, and two minutes for a closing. So if you'd like to start your two minutes, Jerry Hinton. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, my name is Jerry Hinton, and uh, first of all, I think uh, we would all like to express our gratitude to the League of Women Voters for uh, the opportunity to, to speak our views tonight. Um, I'm a political newcomer, unlike the rest of these folks who have been active uh, politically for quite some time, and I respect uh, them all very, very much for the time and service that they've provided. Uh, I, again, am, am new to this. I'm not new to the city in terms of uh, service, but I'm new to the uh, elected office. Um, so just a little bit of background. Uh, I am married, and uh, in a couple months will have uh, been 30 years with my wife. We have two children. Both are at Brigham Young University, and we'll have uh, we'll be graduating at the end of this uh, semester, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> I have uh, a Bachelor's of Science myself in Finance from uh, Brigham Young University. I have an MBA from National University and a law degree from Concord University. I uh, served an internship with the Securities and Exchange Commission in Washington, D.C. Uh, in the trial unit. Uh, I have been uh, a general manager over a uh, business as a ex business executive for the last 26 years. Um, we, um, I have about over 150 employees. Uh, we have over $135 million in sales yearly. Um, this happens to be the second best year in our history, and the next two years promise to forecast to be uh, record-breaking years. So just as a little footnote, if we can do that in this economy, then I think that might be a, a positive uh, step forward in, in the city realm as well. Um, in the in the questions, I'm sure I'll be able to delineate uh, more regarding my uh, stances on uh, different positions and uh, my objectives as well. So I'll go ahead and cut this short. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Lorraine. And I do want to echo um, what Mr. Hinton said. We do appreciate the League of Women Voters, the uh, Gresham Neighborhood Association, the East Metro Community Media, and AAUW Gresham Branch for putting this event on. It's very um, very much appreciated. I am Carolyn Eccles, and I currently serve on Gresham City Council in position three. I am also this year's council president. 
Uh, in my other life, I'm the executive director of a nationwide professional association. We, are, we have 200 members and uh, two people on staff. So I have a good feel for what it's like to have a small company and a lot of demand. I, my husband and I were met and married in Washington, D.C., and then eventually came back to Oregon, my home, and moved to Salem and spent several years in Salem. And we decided that it wasn't the best fit for us. We needed something different. And so we came to the Portland area. And we, we went around to all the communities around Portland. And when we landed in Gresham, we knew we had landed in our home. We fell in love with Gresham immediately. We loved the charm. We loved the energy. We loved the green spaces and parks. There's everything about it and, and the business climate. So we moved here um, Thanksgiving weekend of 1994 and um, experienced our first East County wind. But we decided to stay, even having gone through that, um, and have settled our, our lives here. Uh, we have a grown daughter who is now married and living in Roseburg, and my husband is uh, in private practice, an attorney in private practice here. But one of the things I want to say is the, one of the reasons why I'm running is really encapsulated on the shirt of the League of Women Voters. Democracy is not a spectator sport, and I have always felt um, called to community service, civic service, and so I um, enjoy being on city council. It's an honor to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Richard? My name is Dick Strathern. I'm 74 years old. I'm back. <laughs> this is probably the most surprised person in the room. Uh, part of being back is I got involved in uh, two aspects. And I wanted also to thank the organization for letting me speak tonight and participate in this program. The two aspects is number one, I have a, a strong passion having served on council for four years, <clears throat> and uh, as my colleague here, also one year as uh, council uh, president. I then took two years off and tried to figure out what in the heck did I just go through, and what's it all about, and what does it mean? And after much thought, I had the opportunity to attend the uh, Charter Review Committee, and guess what, in the old furnace, the passion got fired up again, and I come roaring out found myself suddenly in a David versus Goliath battle um, with the issue of restoring district elections here in Gresham. In 1968, they were eliminated and replaced with at-large type election process. I happen to feel that there's nothing wrong with at-large election process if it's truly an at-large election process. Unfortunately, after much study of the Gresham election process, the at-large, as far as I'm concerned, it was apparent to me that it was a hoax pulled over the eyes of the citizens for the last 25 years. So you're going to hear quite a bit about that tonight. <clears throat> I also think that this position, number three, is extremely important on city council for the simple reason this position, depending on how it goes, makes up the majority of this council. And uh, so this is what it's all about, and I think this battle will be an interesting one. Thank you. Thank you. Paul? Thank you. Uh, thanks again to the League. That little yellow book you put out, I think it's kind of fun to use that so much. Um, <clears throat> my name is Paul Warking, and uh, I have a background. I've been on the city council now for eight years. Prior to that, I was spent over 40 years in the area of banking. I spent a lot of time overseas, different places that I've lived. <clears throat> and when I came to the community of Gresham and in 1990, I saw that this was a place that I really wanted to settle down. And I've enjoyed being part of a community. I um, sometimes uh, am jealous of the people who are raised here and their contacts and their friends. But um, fortunately, I did uh, end up marrying a Gresham girl, uh, Mary Jo over there, so she's part of the Gresham community. Um, my background in finance, I think, has been very helpful as far as the uh, council is concerned. <clears throat> I think that we've got a lot accomplished in the past year, uh, past few years, both the mayor and council. I think that we've improved uh, 
a lot of services in the city. I think we've reached out a lot to other jurisdictions and we have a lot of respect, I believe, for Gresham now in the overall uh, metro area. Uh, I think that we have developed a culture within the city, thanks to the city manager, of a service culture. Um, the the uh, citizen is our client. And I think that now has permeated through a lot of the staff functions and uh, a recognition that we are providing excellent service. We're also trying to uh, provide as much outside uh, consideration for citizen involvement through participation in neighborhood associations, et cetera. I won't go on any further. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll start the questions, and we'll start with Carolyn. What do you consider the main issues facing the city of Gresham in the next five years? There's a number of issues. Uh, one of them probably, which is foundational to most of the other issues, is um, declining revenue and increasing demand. We, in the last, um, since 2009, our revenue has gone down by nine million. We've let go 69 positions, but our population has increased 6%. We have a, th a five, $345 million budget, 54 million of that is um, general fund and we have 518 positions almost 50 of those are grant funded we have worked very hard over the last several years to make sure that we are um, increasing efficiencies cutting costs and looking <coughs> for opportunities to generate new revenue without a sustainable revenue package then services suffer Primarily, services will suffer in the area of emergency services, police and fire, and in our parks area. And um, those all speak to our community livability. We've done a lot of great things around business development, which will help generate revenue. But overall, our current situation is unsustainable, and we really need to move forward with some very courageous action. Thank you. Dick? What do you consider the main issues facing the city of Gresham in the next five years? Basically, I see three, and unfortunately, that's upon us already. And by that, I mean the restoring districts and, and having this at large system uh, has created a very tight chokehold, if you want, on the citizen community uh, by, a, to me, a special power elite. And we're finally, as a city, I think, getting strong enough to address it. Secondly, the, I agree job creation is the way new revenue comes to a community. We're looking for job creation, I believe, in the wrong places. Where we need to look for it, I understand there's anywhere from, in a city of 100,000, from 200, from let's say 150 to 200 entrepreneurs, inventors, uh, startup mentors, people who are retired, uh, investors who could be working with the city within the greater region in order to get investment to start new job startups. The name of the game is jobs. And lastly, I think that ties in with the financial instability that we're uh, currently confronted with. And the only way I know of uh, addressing that issue directly is we haven't cut enough. This whole idea of, of $7.50 is nothing more than a Band-Aid. It's a very shallow approach to letting the citizens know the deep trouble we were actually in. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, what do you consider the main issues facing the city of Gresham in the next five years? Well, we can all get back to the budget. All the cities in uh, Oregon are going through the same problems. <clears throat> it manifests more with us because we of all the big cities in, in the state of Oregon, we got stuck with 361 as a, as a tax base back in 1997. And that's what we're living with, and that's the setting the, uh, as far as our property tax rates. And that's gonna be with us for the next couple of years because you're only gonna see a 3% growth whereas our expenses are continuing to go. Um, we have tried to do a levy uh, on this before. Unfortunately, that was turned down by actually a very small vote. The problem of uh, balancing the budget is gonna be with the state. 
the state has to make a decision on this uh, Measure 50. And I was on a taxation finance committee for the League of Oregon Cities, and it basically came down to three things. is either resetting the value of the houses back to what the market value is, or extending the levy out to 10 years. And this is one of the two things that's been uh, as far as economic development, uh, yes, this is important. I feel there's other ways that we should be expanding that e promotion of ec economic development, too. Thank you. Jerry, what do you consider the main issues facing the city of Gresham in the next five years? Well, first of all, to echo uh, the, the other uh, candidates, um, the fiscal deficit uh, that is looming over us over the next couple of years is, uh, is going to be something that needs to be dealt with. And currently, the mayor and the current city council has, uh, is doing some drastic measures in order to shore up essential services, and that's very important, and I support that. Uh, however, um, it's, it's, it's uh, possibly too little too late. Um, we need to be able to not only be able to uh, put this through, which is not any um, sure measure, measure uh, yet, uh, nor has it been uh, uh, decided upon how it's going to be implemented, implemented. Um, but we need to look at other ways to, to get that revenue and increase the tax base. Uh, there is currently in, uh, in Oregon, uh, for any other comparable cities, uh, Gresham is, has got the lowest tax base. And because of that, we have a decaying city in terms of just driving down the road. You can recognize that with our, with our uh, storefronts and so on. Um, we need to maintain those essential services. And by doing, uh, uh, getting back to creating family wage jobs, which in Oregon, in, in Gresham, 52% uh, of our, of our uh, 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 primary uh, wage jobs are under um, family wage jobs, which are $35,000 or more a year. We need to do better with that. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with, with you, Dick. What is your position on Measure 26-141 to elect councilors by district and explain? Okay. <laughs> Again. As you all know, I do have a tremendous passion on that, but I'm not the only one. When we were get, uh, seeking signatures, we were astonished by the number of people that weren't even aware that we didn't have districts. And part of that, again, goes back to uh, the at-large election system, which confuses the daylights out of these people. They don't know whether they're horseback or foot when it comes to voting and who they vote for. They're voting for positions rather than consulars. And we've had the last two elections where two of the three consulars ran unopposed the one election the mayor was unopposed. What does that tell you about our election system when people don't bother to vote? And look at the number of undervotes. It's a scandal that a city of 100,000 can't muster enough candidates to get a halfway decent turnout of the electorate. You know, the biggest concern I heard, the people don't think we're doing enough and they feel their citizen voices are missing in this chamber and they're not sure if you look at north of uh, Burnside, almost half of our population comes from there, and not a single person has a seat on city council. Something is very, very wrong. And the last point is we know that a majority of council comes from one neighborhood. I'm for one who likes to see us have a democracy in the entire city and not in one neighborhood. Thank you. Paul, what is your position on electing councillors by district? Well, I did vote for this to go on the ballot with my colleague, uh, Councillor Killian, there. Um, I felt that uh, particularly from just my campaigning now, going out into some of the outlying neighborhoods, talking to people in Wilkes and other areas and just knocking on doors, people don't know where to go. They don't know whether they're part of the city or not. They've got a Portland address. Why are you calling on me? I'm, are you, why are you calling? You're Gresham. And people are confused and they don't know where to go. They don't know where to go for the services. And I think uh, that uh, if you look at the overall of trying to, of a city of our size of 100, 110,000 people, Eventually, this is going to happen. It's going to have to happen where you're going to have some representation from smaller areas. 
I spoke to uh, one of the counselors from Salem when I was at the league meeting recently, and uh, he actually represents a ward. He's been on the council for six, six years. And I asked him, how does it work? He said, it's great. He says, uh, I sit on the council here as an overall. I participate in the budgets. I know what's going on. But at the same time, I'm representing my community, and people know where to go to talk to me. We've got volunteers coming in and knocking on my door. Can we do that part? Can we do this? And I think we've reached that stage now where we really have to consider this. Thank you. <clears throat> Jerry, do you need the question repeated? No, thank you. Um, I think uh, intuitively, I think that uh, most r residents assume that uh, there is districts already. If you went and talked to 100 people, I bet you 90 would or would say, yeah, oh yes, I'm, I'm sure that the city is, is represented by districts. So I think intuitively that that's, uh, that's something that the uh, electorate already believes is in place. And I think they'd be uh, uh, rather astounded that, uh, that, they're, uh, that, that it's not that way and that in order to get something through to somebody, they would have to navigate through any number of individuals that necessarily don't have ownership over a particular area. So I, I would support that. Um, and again, I'm not, uh, again, uh, have not been in the political scene like these other folks, so they're gonna have a much stronger opinion about this. But just from my outside looking in, it does seem uh, intuitive. Uh, I think it would help uh, 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 help to resolve some of the apathy in the neighborhoods. Uh, earlier questions were regarding uh, how do we uh, uh, create better volunteer uh, uh, work and so on in the communities. And I think this is one of the ways that, w that could help, actually. If, if you've got one individual who's dedicated over one area where, the individual, where, the, uh, where it's easier to navigate to the electorate and let them know uh, who is responsible and who has ownership, and accountability for that area, it's easier to help uh, the, the groundswell and the grassroots effort in terms of volunteers and, and uh, uh, really utilizing the, the, uh, uh, the pluralism that we have in, in, in Gresham. Thank you. Carolyn, what is your position on okay. the measure? I, on measure? My position on measure 26-141 about um, carving the city into six districts I am 100% opposed to it. Um, as a citizen and as a voter, what would happen if we go to districts is I lose my right to vote for three counselors every two years, and instead what I gain is the opportunity and the right to vote for only one counselor every four years. I don't see how that is going to improve apathy or improve representation. In fact, I think it'll do the absolute office, opposite of that. One of the things that a lot of people don't know about City Council is that we are volunteers, and it is a very demanding, it's an honor, but it's not easy to serve. For people to participate at this level, it kind of comes down to you're retired, you're unemployed, you own your own job, uh, business, or like me, you have an employer who's very supportive and flexible. But those elements really kind of knock a lot of people out of the running um, and being able to participate. The other thing is that I've heard a lot that um, Rockwood is not represented. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Councilor Fuhrer was raised and lived in Rockwood. Councilor Stegman was raised in Rockwood and has her business in Rockwood. And I dare say she probably spends most of her waking hours there than in her home. So I just, it's unequivocal. I am completely opposed to districting the way it's currently being presented. Thank you. And before we get to the next question, uh, for the audience, if you have some questions, please fill them out and put them on cards and raise your hand and our league members will pick it up. Now getting on to a, the third question and we'll start with you, Paul. What two things would you do in the next 12 months to attract and establish business and industries that would make a positive contribution to our, our economy and our civic government? I think as far as the small businesses are concerned, particularly in the downtown area, <clears throat> we've instituted a number of programs that, that have encouraged them to come into town here. Unfortunately, I think we're, that's going to run out at the end of this year, and we may have to extend that for another year, which I'm sure the council will be prepared to do. The other business that we gain is either uh, mostly coming in from 
uh, referrals that we get from Portland Development Commission, the State of Oregon uh, Business Finance Group, and we have an economic development department uh, from the city that works very closely with those folks. I feel that we could uh, be more aggressive. <coughs> I, I think having, in, in my background, I had to go out and knock on doors to get businesses um, to do their loans and deposits, et cetera. I think if we hear of opportunities that we shouldn't be beholden to some of these agencies that we have uh, and we should go out and do this. The other thing I feel very strongly about is the, tr the president is pushing an export incentive programs. I think this is something we could really push uh, in having businesses look to the export programs, there's tax advantages, et cetera. And with the new land now at LSI, uh, already somebody said about the possibility of putting in a foreign trade zone, which would be a very good employment base. So I think there's opportunities if we become more aggressive on this. Thank you. Jerry, do you need the question repeated? Uh, yes, please. What two things would you do in the next 12 months to attract and establish business and industries that would make a positive contribution to our economy and our civic government? Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that uh, we need to create uh, both a long-term and a short-term strategy, two prongs. Um, first of all, we need to cast in terms of a short-term uh, strategy, uh, a very wide net to try to fill our storefronts. Um, the, the very thing that we're trying to do in terms of attracting business from, uh, from all over the country is exactly what I do for a living. I'm bringing in uh, auto manufacturers, Chrysler, uh, Honda, uh, GM, uh, VW, so on and so forth, major manufacturers from across the country. Um, captive finance accounts, uh, commercial accounts, rental fleets. Uh, I reach out to companies from all over, the, all over the country, and I have to lure them in within a 500-mile radius, represent them as opposed to them going somewhere else. Uh, it's exactly the kind of thing that our city government needs to do in terms of reaching out to, to businesses across the country and being creative in doing so. Uh, the, second, the second prong is long-term strategy. We only have so much raw land in, in Gresham, and we need to have a long-term strategy and be judicious about family wage, job, uh, that, uh, family wage jobs that we want to create, uh, which industries that we want to, to bring in to do that and to, to provide for that. Again, uh, only 50%, 52 percent of the uh, citizens in the, in the, that uh, earn wages actually have a, a 35,000 or more a job, that job base is inadequate and the, the reason for our uh, inadequate tax base. Thank you. Carolyn, do you need it repeated? Yes, please. What two things would you do in the next 12 months to attract and establish business and industries that would make a positive contribution to our economy and our civic government? Thank you. Um, one of the things that a counselor can do is to set the expectations for the city and set policy. And I think that our council has done a fabulous job of saying a priority for our community is economic economic development and family wage jobs. And we have put into place with the uh, assistance of staff a variety of tools and incentives that will bring businesses here and make it easy for them to not only start but to thrive. And as a counselor, I think it's important for us to keep those incentives and tools going as long as reasonable. One of the incentives the Garage to Storefront program has brought in more than 55 small businesses filling 80,000 square feet of vacant, op uh, vacant office commercial space since it started. That expires December 31st. There's an opportunity to move that forward, to, um, to extend that. Another thing that um, there's, a, there's uh, LSI Logic that we entered into uh, partnership with the Port of Portland. They spent nearly $27 million purchasing the shovel-ready property around the former LSI Logic building. And we need to continue our partnership with the Port of Portland to fill those spaces. There's 203 developable acres. And so that would be something that I would continue. And then finally, I have to support emergency services. If crime is escalating, if there's no response when someone needs fire or medical s support, businesses won't come here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know the question. What it's, two things would you do in right, the next? I'm fine with that. Oh, okay. That's a great question. 
The two things, I, I would say number one, starting off as someone who spent 22 years in HR, I had a lot of people come to me, companies, uh, who were wanting to have, or cities rather, coming and wanting our company to relocate in their community. And one of the first things that I know that we were concerned about was the quality of life in that community and what were the issues and the problems and whether or not um, the, um, the city was considered one where there was high involvement on the part of the citizens. I think based on what we just went through in terms of hearing some of the comments on district elections, we wouldn't look, be looked upon too well based on some of the stunts that had been pulled to prevent district elections from coming in. The second thing, when I was on council, I tried very hard to get staff and council interested in, a, in participating in the greater region. It was like we were a bunch of isolationists. And I know for a fact, in, in terms of cluster development, the state holds a meeting every month with Portland and the surrounding communities so that people can network with these people that are trying to start up companies. And it was very difficult, if not impossible, to get anyone on this council to attend that meeting. They were too busy to network in that critical area, and that's where jobs come from. Thank you. Thank you. And now, some questions from the audience. And we'll start with you, Jerry. The proposals of the district ballot measures state that Council districts will do more to engage Gresham residents than the current system. In case the ballot measure fails, what will you do to better engage the residents of Gresham in, in the city council discussion and effort? I think I get the gist of it. Effort in business. Right. Um, good question. Uh, begs the question what's been happening um, I think there again there is a, a lot of apathy out there but there's a lot of great work that's being done too particularly and I noticed some of our neighborhood association <coughs> folks that are here um, being on the citizen involvement committee for a number of years I was absolutely impressed with the level of dedication and commitment these folks have and the uh, ability to to get into the homes of these individuals they are the lifeblood of connecting to the, the residents of, of, of this city. I think uh, there are other an untapped uh, areas as well, church groups um, and other associations that if we just reached out to them, their very nature is to serve others. Um, there's not a church group in this city that uh, their, their main tenant is not to serve their fellow man. And so if we could tap into that and uh, connect that with city involvement, I think we would uh, have a very, very successful and, uh, and a plentiful amount of volunteers in addition to the diversity that we have in this city. We should take advantage of that. Um, my goodness, we have every uh, culture here in the world and we should take advantage of that and make that a plus, not a, not a negative. Thank you. Carolyn, would you like to address that? Can you give it another go? The proponents of the district ballot measures state that council districts will do more to engage Gresham residents than the current system. In in the case, in case this ballot measure fails, what will you do to better engage residents of Gresham in the city council discussions and effort of business? There's, there's somewhat what I would consider two prongs to that. One is engaging citizens in the policy level with city councilors. And the way that we do that now is to encourage citizens to come forward before city council meetings every city council meeting and talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. And citizens do that. I was recently uh, in, at a, a place in Rockwood and a developer came up to me and he was very frustrated with some of our development issues. And I said, come, come to city council, come to a town hall and, and speak your mind. And he did the very next one. And so I think that, that that's how citizens engage at that level. The other part, as uh, Mr. Hinton is saying, is there's lots of opportunities for volunteerism in the city. I ser currently serve as a liaison to the Citizen Involvement Committee, which is a city council advisory committee. And we spent the last year, the committee has spent the last year looking at ways to um, engage more of our diverse communities in city, city business 
business. And they have come out, in fact, just recently issued their recommendations that staff have already started working on. So they're w looking at ways to break down barriers and uh, bring in more of our diverse population. And then I w also would continue to support and, and really look for additional great projects that citizens can get involved in. A couple of examples is our community uh, policing projects, citizen volunteers in policing, and our park support. Thank you. Thank you. Dick? Okay. First of all, I, I, there's a very low probability that it's going to fail based on the feedback we're getting from the, the, from the uh, citizens. But should it fail, it's going to be a whole different world, in my opinion. The Pandora's box has been open. People are no longer going to tolerate their voices being silent. They're no longer going to tolerate not holding these counselors accountable. My guess would be very quickly they'll be looking at the next step of where do we go next do we, in terms of the next ballot. If we can get a majority of council, council can turn right around and very shortly put it back on the ballot again if it's a close election, for example. When they threw out districts, it was by 1% in 1986. That was a big secret that was kept from the people on the review committee when they were studying this issue. It was almost like that election never happened. So uh, the Pandora's box gang is open. It's going to be a different world for this council and a different world for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, do you need the question repeated? No, it's OK. <clears throat> um, I think that it's been an eye-opener for me, and perhaps uh, I feel that I haven't done my job properly in getting out and meeting people through the campaign until I fell on the step, and uh, covered a lot of areas, knocking on doors and talking to people. Um, they don't feel they get the support of neighborhood associations. They don't even know who the neighborhood association is. When I tell them, why don't you call your neighborhood association? Um, what I want to do is, um, and I, I'm retired, yes I do have the time, <clears throat> I am a full-time counselor, I attend all the meetings, and I go to as many opportunities as I can of other jurisdiction meetings and whatever is going on. Shirley Craddock can account for me on that. Um, but I think what I want to do is spend more time out into the neighborhoods, devote maybe one day or two days and start to do that and start to um, try and relate to the folks out there. The, the financial thing that we're going through now, people do not understand how the city is run. They don't know why we got into this mess where we are now. Because they, I know people are busy. But I think it, we do have to do more outreach if, if, this, if uh, the district fails. And I think that's our responsibility as counselors. Thank you. Another audience question, and we'll start with you, Dick. How do you plan on familiarizing yourself with the problems and concerns of individual neighborhood associations? Having had the opportunity over the last uh, six months of attending and visiting anyone that would let us come in and uh, present, I would continue to do that same thing. Now. There is one thing you could do, and that is if, if they wanted to have more engagement, you could assign counselors just like we do now to these advisory groups to particular neighborhoods. We got 16 neighborhoods, so you got seven people, including the mayor. Wouldn't be too hard. You wouldn't be asking too much and say, this year, Dick, you're going to be responsible for those two neighborhoods and we expect you to attend their meetings. I, I think that would be no big deal. But trying to attend 16 neighborhood meetings is an impossibility. Does that answer? Yeah, thank yes, thank you. Paul? Repeat, uh, would you repeat it again? How do you plan on familiarizing yourself with the problems and concerns of individual neighborhood associations? I've tried to get out uh, to as many neighborhood associations as I can the unfortunate situation is a very small attendance. Unless there's something that's going to be <clears throat> of particular interest within that particular area, you might have four or five people there. No, I know there's uh, some exceptions in Kelly Creek uh, because of the leadership there 
and Wilkes, but most of the other ones is very small membership. Um, I think that if we uh, encourage this by our participation and had subjects that were of interest in taking out even the council going out to some of the events, some of the neighborhood associations having meetings there, getting out of here, start to go out into the neighborhood, start to go out in the community and show our faces. And once again, I know I'm working, I'm on the council with a number of people who are working in, and this is hard for them to do, raising families. Okay, throw it on us old retired guys. We'll go out there and do it. So. But I, I, we've got to reach out, and I really have realized this, and uh, that's what I've been trying to do. Even if it means having coffee breaks in some of the neighborhoods, I think that would be beneficial. Thank you. And Jerry? Now, I might be old, but I'm not retired. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still active. And uh, I, I would uh, seek the opportunity to get to know the neighborhood associations. Again, got to know a lot of the leaders through the, the Citizens Advisory Committee. I certainly would uh, advocate that the city continue to send counselors uh, to have ownership, uh, not ownership, but uh, a level of accountability with these advisory groups. I, I love the idea, actually, uh, I think Paul mentioned, uh, or maybe it was Dick, um, regarding uh, assigning um, uh, a counselor to a particular neighborhood. If the redistricting, if the districting thing failed, uh, I, I think that would be a wonderful idea. Again, it would provide some direction and some accountability without uh, uh, the formalization of the, of the districting. Um, I would support that 100 percent. I think uh, I think there needs to be events. I think there needs to be, uh, again, with that uh, uh, navigating towards what the people are concerned about in that area, you can build events around that. It's just marketing. It's business. The city, at the end of the day, is a, is a business. Uh, and it's it's all marketing, and it can be done. It's done every day in every private uh, venture. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Carolyn. I've got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have to say, as a working person, you know, the executive director of a national association, I I don't get out as often as I would like, and it's uh, it is frustrating. However, um, I don't think that that means that I don't know what's going on in the neighborhood associations. Um, we hear from the neighborhood associations. I attend uh, the Citizen Involvement Committee. I've attended other meetings and hear what's going on. But I certainly could do more to uh, learn about the issues specific to our neighborhood associations. I never thought that I would say this, but I think I believe uh, agree with Mr. Strathern on um, assigning counselors or at least um, assigning us to at least visit a couple of neighborhood association meetings during the course of a year. We have many, many meetings that we attend, as um, most, as many people know, and um, I know that I could do a better job of getting out to those. Thank you. So we. Um, Dick, <laughs> we have another question. Please explain your views on the future of Rockwood, West Gresham Urban Renewal Programs. Hmm. Let's start with uh, Rockwood. I have had the opportunity over the last four or five months because of the districting campaign to get out there. And we had the opportunity to talk to uh, several organizers in the Rockwood community. What kind of surprised me is they were in no way, shape, or form engaged with the Neighborhood Association or the Rockwood Business Association. And one of them was completely baffled by the fact of how in the world can someone live somewhere else in the city and think they're representing us. We don't feel that we're represented in those two organizations I just mentioned in that community. They kind of mocked out the fact that we have this beautiful brochure that talks about Rockwood and uh, uh, they say there's, you know, where's all this happening? We haven't been engaged. We're not involved. And I th tried to throw it back on them, and I'll never forget this one gentleman. He had to be at least 80 years old. I said, uh, well, look, you've got Human Solutions. Look at that building. You've got the Justice Center. We've got the new police station going in. 
And then there was, he just looked me right in the eyes and he said, Dick, how many jobs has that brought our community? Pretty tough. Thank you. Paul? <clears throat> Please explain your views on the future of Rockwood West Gresham Urban Renewal Programs. Uh, I guess I put on my banker's hat here. Um, I've been involved in the financial side, both of the city to a large extent on uh, chair of the budget committee and now I'm liaison to the budget committee and finance committee. Um, Jerry is uh, one of the members of that particular committee, but also uh, the urban renewal funds are separate from the normal CPA and then they're consolidated in our annual reports. Um, we are not generating uh, sufficient funding in what we refer to as tax investment revenue, increase in revenue from taxes to pay back our existing debt from cash flow right now. And that concerns me. Um, part of the problem is that uh, we're not bringing in businesses that are, are tax paying. They're all nonprofits. And uh, somewhere down the line, there's going to be a reckoning on that because we're leaning right now on lines of credit which have to be turned into bonds. And the, the urban renewal district actually expires in 2023, which isn't that far off. So I'm, I'm concerned about this. Uh, I'm watching it very closely if I'm continuing on the council and in the same way that I'm also doing as far as watching our budgets internally here, particularly with the support of a very strong finance committee. Thank you. Carolyn, would you please explain your views on the future of the Rockwood West Gresham urban renewal programs? Well, as uh, Councillor Working said, we are facing down 11 years uh, the urban renewal program expiring and we have not accomplished everything that I think we envisioned for Rockwood Urban Renewal in terms of tax increment funding. But it's not because of a lack of effort on the part of the, of the city or the Gresham Redevelopment Commission. It really is, again, like all the rest of us in this room, has experienced the downturn of the economy and that certainly impacted that area. There are things taking place. We are moving forward on siting the police facility there. There are investment tools available to businesses in that area. And a lot of those really require a certain commitment to jobs, good paying jobs, at a minimum, twice minimum wage kinds of jobs. We are bringing in businesses, but they're not real flashy necessarily. We have uh, Portland Specialty Baking, um, has um, invested $1.4 million in their company alone, which has increased their production by 10%. And that money, that increases tax revenue back to the city, which will allow us to do more things. We have a couple of other companies that are quiet companies, but they are in the Rockwood, West Gresham area, and they are um, bringing life into that community, and we just need to continue our efforts in that regard and keep it as a priority. Thank you. Jerry? Thank you. Uh, I, I'm not going to be able to speak as intelligently about this as these folks who have been dealing with this for uh, quite some time. Um, but with the expiration of the, of the program, certainly essential services are going to be um, a, a great priority. Uh, I don't know uh, what the ratio is, but uh, I believe it's a very, very high ratio of most of the um, police calls are in the Rockwood area. Um, there needs to maintain that uh, ability to service that area. Uh, and unfortunately, that's taken them away from uh, being able to care for parts of the other city uh, in terms of its essential services. So, you know, really we need to do a much better job there in terms of providing funding for them. Uh, and how do we do that? Uh, we've cut down to the bone uh, in a lot of areas. Again, we've, we face a fiscal cliff uh, here in the next couple of years if we don't do something. And it comes back down to uh, being creative and, and uh, in imposing our e economic development. Uh, we, we have to be creative. Just like the private sector is creative, uh, government has to be creative as well. Again, at the end of the day, um, you know, there, there are things that, uh, that, that can be done, that have to be done, 
and to uh, uh, I read a great article the other day in the Oregonian about a mayor in uh, Dallas uh, reaching out to businesses all across the country and being creative as opposed to our mayor in Portland who just complained about uh, not enough businesses coming. There's two different ways of doing things and it's all about uh, getting out there and marketing. Thank you all for your answers. Now we'll have our closing statements. And Jerry, would you like to start those? Oh, certainly, thank you. Again, uh, I'm a newcomer. Uh, I've never ran for a political office before. Uh, again, my, uh, my, folk, my kids are out of, out of the house and uh, we are empty nesters. Um, I have been in service at one level or another my whole life. However, I served a two-year mission for my church in Bolivia, uh, speaking Spanish and I'm not an Indian. Um, I have uh, been in service and leadership positions, uh, volunteer positions my entire life that uh, fill a great part of my time. Now that I'm an empty nester, my wife would like me to do something uh, outside of uh, uh, being next to her all the time, and I appreciate that. I love her dearly, but uh, uh, she's a bunco tonight, so she's not here to give me any grief about that. But um, uh, I am here to serve, and I have practical leadership to be able to uh, provide assistance to this city. I love the city. It's a beautiful city. We have great diversity here. We have the opportunity to not be the poorest uh, tax base in the in the state of Oregon amongst uh, comparable cities, but uh, do a much better job in increasing the livability and the and the and the standard of uh, duty here for our our, our citizens. Um, again, I wouldn't take pride in being the lowest tax base in the city, which sometimes you hear that and, and, and uh, almost they take pride in that. I wouldn't take pride in that necessarily. I don't want to tax our citizens anymore. I don't want to create any more fees for them, but there's a way to do that through business development where the, the, where the, where the fees come through that growth. And through that growth, this is a much better environment to live in. Um, we can do much better. Uh, it's, it would be an honor to serve. Um, my opponent uh, did not sign up for the League of Women Voters, uh, nor is he here today. So uh, I'm what you get, and, and uh, he, I'm sure he's a very good man, uh, and I, I respect uh, his uh, willingness to serve. Uh, but I, I hope you've, uh, uh, I hope I've answered your questions. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Lorraine, and I want to thank again the uh, League of Women Voters and the co-sponsors for uh, putting on this event. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm currently sitting on city council. I am in position three. I am the incumbent. I am the council president. But I also served on city councilor, council between 2005 and 2007. So what I bring to this position is experience in the trenches, actually doing the job and watching how our community is um, it ebbs and flows over the course of how the economy goes and I've been here to see that happen and I've been able to call upon my work experience I've been in workforce development for many years I've been a small business owner I worked in criminal justice both at the local level and at the national level for 14 years I've worked with education so I have a pretty um, diverse background that I bring to this position and one of the things that I that is common to all of those is the need to have a common sense approach and to avoid knee jer jerk reactions but, but look at the facts and those are the things that I bring to this position you know the city council does an annual work plan and we uh, it's carved into basically three areas one is building community the other is realizing opportunity, and the, and the final one is practicing sustainability. And we have over 20 projects in the works right now that support those three um, pillars, if you would. And I, um, as I feel strongly about that council work plan, and I pledge to continue to work to make sure that that, um, that goes forward and that we, and we stay to the course. We are facing a difficult time. There's no question about it. But um, it's the time we've we've learned a lot we've done a lot and as a city and now it's time to make some hard decisions I am uh, honored to be endorsed by the Gresham Outlook the Firefighters Association and the East Metro Association of Realtors as well as many other community leaders as I know my opponent is as well um, but I would just want to thank the league for this opportunity thank you and Dick okay I'd just like to close by saying that um, one of my big concerns I'm going to go to it right away is I don't think the $7.50 in fee increase should be imposed on any citizen in this community 
until we can be assured by city council and the city manager and the mayor that everything has been possibly done to reduce costs and waste in the city. And I don't have time to list five or six ideas, but I'll give you one good one. Instead of all this extreme and extensive public relations that goes on, where we have several people across several departments uh, doing the PR thing about how great everything is going and not letting people know what's really happening, we could save $500,000 tomorrow by reducing that excessive PR. And I would like to see that money go to the police, the fire, and city parks. That's just one of several examples. In industry, I ran a plant of 500 people. I ran another one of 200. I was an HR manager with 2,500 employees. When times got tough, we were always able to find the money. If it, if it meant creating new uh, revenue streams by seeing all the dollar bills that were laying all over the floor that are wasted, we haven't done enough. And I know when I first came to government, I was told, Dick, get with it. I, let me give you a statistic. One out of 5,000 people in government are terminated because of job, a bad job performance. So get with, the, get with the agenda. Well, I never got with the agenda. So I just think there is so much more we could do, we could contribute, and we can stand our own two, on our own two feet. We can do a lot more than we have done. Let's quit putting taxes on the, on the backs of the little guy to bail us out, because that's what we've done. Thank you. Thank you. Paul? Well, I'm fortunate to have a career in the private, center, private sector for a number of years, and certainly working with businesses in all categories along that way, as well as uh, working with international firms. The last eight years, I've uh, worked in government. I've grown to respect people in government a lot, and for what we get out of the uh, wages and uh, contribution they make. Um, and I've been on the Budget and Finance Committee, and, and we've gone through that budget with a fine tooth comb. And I defer to my friend here, um, we disagree on this one. I think that uh, with all of the efficiencies that the city has already put in, the number of people we've let out, the staff stepping up to the bat right now and trying to find things that they can do to save money, I think the mayor has taken the right step here on the 750. We need it. If we don't have uh, a, a budget uh, positive of, of a uh, general fund, um, we're going to have problems. We don't have a rainy day fund to fall back on. Uh, today we uh, apparently practiced an earthquake. What if we do have a real one? And that could be a major hit on the city for as far as uh, funding for that until we get federal help. These are the type of things. And um, uh, I support the mayor very much on this, and uh, I think he's done a great job in going out on this and trying to get the public involved. So thank you for, I hope to be able to be on your council <coughs> again, and I appreciate the opportunity to do so, and I think that I can contribute a lot from certainly past experience, and uh, I welcome your vote. Thank you. It's great to see and hear candidates, and want to thank all of you for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.